Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, we'll have a look at administrative distance in the lab. So I've got the usual topology here, R1 through to R5. The IP addresses are already configured. And right now I'm running RIP along the top path between routers R1 and R4. R5 does not have any routing protocols configured on there. So let's have a look at this. So I'll go into the command line on R1. I can do a show IP protocols and you'll see that the only protocol I've got running right now is RIP. And if I do a show IP route, you can see I've got my RIP routes in the routing protocol and in the table and they've got an administrative distance of 120 which is the AD for RIP. So next up I will configure ISIS which is the next most preferred administrative distance. So I've got my config ready here and I will paste it onto the routers. Actually you know what you've seen me doing this before so I'll just pause the video and I will paste in the ISIS config on each of the routers. Okay, so I'm back again. I've pasted in the config. I'll do a show IP protocols on R1 again. And you can see I'm running RIP. And if I scroll through, you'll see I'm also running ISIS as well. If I do a show IP route, it's the ISIS routes that made it into the routing table. I can also do a show IP RIP database. And you can see I'm learning RIP routes as well. So if we look at the routing table, my ISIS routes have got an AD of 115, which is more preferred to the AD of 120 on RIP. So that's why it's my ISIS routes that are making it into the routing table. The next most preferred IGP is OSPF. So let's configure that on our routers. This one doesn't take long to enable, so you can just bear with me as I paste these in. So I'll put that on R1, on R2, R3, and R4. And we're not configuring a routing protocol on R5. Okay, back on to R1 again, and I can do my show IP protocols command. Now you see I'm running RIP, and I'm running ISIS, and I'm running OSPF as well now. And if I do a show IP route, my OSPF route oh, it hasn't converged yet. We'll give it a second for the adjacencies to come up. This shouldn't take too long. Okay, I'll pause the video again. Oh, there we go. All right, so the adjacency just came up now and might need to give it a second on the other routers as well. Let's have a look for a show IP route and I can see that it hasn't fully converged. So I've still got some ISIS routes in there, but there is an OSPF route that's made it into the routing table. Again, it's preferred over the ISIS route because it's got a better administrative distance of 110. Okay, and the last one to do is EIGRP. So let's copy and paste this from Notepad again. Again, I can put the same config in on all of the routers. So this will just take a second. So there's R1, R2, R3, and R4. And if I go back to R1, EIGRP does converge very quickly. So hopefully it will show up by the time I get to looking at the routing table. Let's do a show IP protocols again. And I can see I'm running RIP, ISIS, OSPF, and EIGRP now. And if I have a look at the routing table with a show IP route, 
A D is for EIGRP. It's my EIGRP routes that are making it into the routing table because they've got an administrative distance of 90, which is most preferred. I've still got an ISIS route in here for 203 network because I didn't include that in any of the other routing protocols. Okay, so you saw administrative distance in action. Let's go back to the topology diagram. And what I'm going to do now is configure a floating static route. My routing protocols are only running along the top half routers from R1 to R4. I've not configured a routing protocol on R5. And what I'm going to do on R1 is configure a backup route to the 10.1.2 network behind R4 to go through R5 instead. So I'll need to create an IP route to 10.1.2.0 slash 24 with a next hop of 10.0.3.2. I would also need a static route from R4, sorry, from R5 to R4, and also static routes coming back in the other direction. But I, I only need to do it on R1 just to show you the floating static route working. So let's do that now, back on the command line on R1, I'll go config T, and then I'm going to create an IP route for 10.1.2.0, 255.255.255.0, and the next hop is on R5, which was 10.0.3.2. Now, I won't do it as a floating static route first. I'll just do it as a, as a normal static route. And when I enter this, you see that before my route to the 10.1.2 network was learned through EIGRP, and the next hop was 10.0.0.2, which is on R2. If I do a do show IP route now, you'll see that my route to 10.1.2 has been replaced with the static route because it's got an administrative distance of one, which is better. But for our example, I only want this to be a backup. I don't want it to be the preferred route. So what I need to do is remove that route. So I'll hit the up arrow twice and then control A to go back to the start of the line and then enter no to remove it. And then I'll put the same command in again, but this time I will give it an administrative distance of 95, which is higher and therefore worse than the administrative distance of 90 in EIGRP. So when I enter that, the EIGRP route should be put back into the routing table again. So I'll do a show IP route to see if it's in there yet. And there we go, the EIGRP route is back in the routing table again. I don't see the static route because it is not the best route. It doesn't make it into the routing table, but it is there sitting as a backup though. So let's look at the topology diagram again. And the interface to get out to R2 is fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. So if I shut that down, it should fail over to using my backup route. So let's try that. So I'll go config T and interface fast 0 slash 0 and do a shutdown here. And EIGRP should detect that. So you see EIGRP detected that the neighbor went down. And if I do a show IP route now, I'll see that my static route has made it into the routing table. So my backup worked. Okay, that was administrative distance. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.